Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to create a Kubernetes cron job using Minikube as a local cluster running on your laptop and also how to monitor it with the Lens IDE which, a which is a very handy graphical user interface to check the details about your Kubernetes cluster. Okay, so let's briefly see what we're going to do today. So we're going to see how we can install a few different tools to manage and monitor our Kubernetes cluster. Then we're going to see how we can build and run a Python Docker image based on an hypothetical Python script we want to invoke and all the details about the Docker image. And then also we're going to see how we can deploy resources to our Kubernetes cluster, like for example, a namespace, um, and also this cron job kind, where we define the cron tab syntax for this script that we want to run. And finally, we're gonna see how we can monitor and troubleshoot our Kubernetes cron job with commands, but also how we can do the same with the lens IDE. All right, one final thing, uh, please feel free to go ahead and check this code on GitHub. You can go there, download it and try to reproduce it yourself. So let's get started. Okay, so uh, I'm running on Linux. My laptop is running Linux, Ubuntu. So we're using apt-get and all those things. The kube control command line utility can be installed by adding the apt repository and then invoking app get install um, with minikube well one other, another thing please go ahead and check the documentation it's quite straightforward the same thing is for minikube you can check their documentation basically this is a dev package you can install with the package um, we're going to talk a bit more about linters later, but this is pip, the Python package manager. We can install a few different packages with pip, and also we can install a binary uh, from GitHub for this kubeval command that is very helpful in linting YAML code that is representing Kubernetes resources. Um, this is how you install the Lens IDE for Kubernetes. It's basically a dev package that you download from their website and you install with the package. Okay, so let's start by running our Python script from the command line. This is our Python script. It's nothing fancy. It's a for loop of 10 iterations, sleeping one second every time, uh, trying to represent some sort of a task that you need to run that takes some time to be executed. So Python uh, CJ sample, you see these 10 iterations running for, uh, sorry, uh, sleeping 10 seconds and it's done. Okay, so assuming we have this Python code, let's talk about best practice. So um, we don't want to deploy code that could be buggy or contain some vulnerabilities. There are a few tools you can use in Python to achieve this. There's Black to format the code, PyType to check the types because Python is a dynamically typed language, but you can enforce types uh, you, uh, and check them using PyType. Then we can use this linter like uh, linters like flake 8 to check the cyclomatic complexity and basic rules for example like unused imports that you can clean up before pushing the code or pytlin which is heavy linting on the code and eventually you can also scan the code for vulnerabilities with bandit so let's say we invoke lint py script you can use this as a step or as a stage in your CI CD pipelines to block the execution before deploying to production code that could be harmful. Okay, so now let's talk about Docker. Um, assuming our Minikube uh, cluster is up and running with Minikube start, we can check this. Also this way we have this cluster and we are attached to this cluster 
um, with the kubectl command line utility. So uh, when we build a Docker image, this Docker image is attached to our Docker service that run in our laptop, but Minikube is a separate cluster in our laptop. So uh, we need to somehow load this image in the cluster. And we can do this in a couple of different ways, either this way or by using the command Minikube image load and then the name of the image that we tagged here when we built the image. Now, this is because we're using Minikube, but for normal scenarios with, for example, a cloud environment like in AWS with a managed cluster for Kubernetes, you're probably going to use a private registry. So you're going to push this Docker image to your private registry and then pull it inside the cluster. And this is managed in our YAML configuration for the Chrome job. And here you can see that we define the image. We're going to talk a bit more about this later, so uh, bear with me. Um, so just for the sake of completeness, uh, I've already built everything, but let's run Docker build uh, so we can see all the layers have been cached. And then when we invoke this command here, uh, you see that this image is here and has been built a couple of hours ago. Now we can also invoke this to make sure that our image is inside our minikube cluster so we grab for let's say cj sample and as you can see the image is loaded inside the cluster so we're good to go because the minikube cluster will know that the image is there and it can check the image with this tag uh, starting sorry from this yaml configuration with this image name and tag latest okay so we have an image well we can run the docker container this way but this is not related to minikube it's just for you to test things but let's say we want to deploy this cron job resource and this namespace resource to our kubernetes cluster now this yaml code could contain bugs so we may want to link both uh, sorry, we may want to link the YAML code both with the generic YAML linter but also with kubeval which is a very useful command line utility that understands Kubernetes syntax and checks your YAML code or configuration uh, and making sure it's compliant with the Kubernetes spec. Okay, so let's invoke this to make sure our YAML code works or is linked. Here you can see the command with yamlint, which is a pip package we installed here with pip. And by the way, this is the way we install kubeval, starting from GitHub is a binary. So um, this yamlint command is nothing fancy. This is a very long line that configures the way we want to invoke the linter, but basically we make sure spaces have length 2 so the code is indented the way we expect also all the lines are maximum 120 characters long and stuff like that and also kubeval is invoked on both our chrome job app yaml file and our namespace yaml file and they're both valid so we can be confident that we're not introducing bugs and we can go ahead and deploy our resources so we're gonna invoke basically this command to make sure the namespace is there in the cluster and this command to make sure the cron job is there in the cluster. And later we're gonna try to also retrieve the pods and for the first time when we invoke cube deploy, we're gonna see that there are no pods just because we need to wait the two minutes uh, from the cron tab syntax uh, to make sure that uh, something is actually running. So let's briefly check our YAML configuration. So we already uh, talked about the image. 
Now, usually with a cloud provider, with a managed cluster, for example, in AWS, you're gonna use a Docker private registry. So when you build your image, then you're gonna push it to your private registry. And then your Kubernetes cluster on AWS is gonna know where this private registry is and is gonna be able to pull images from the private registry. But in our example, uh, we are just loading the image to our mini cube cluster, the way we've seen before here. Uh, where was it? Um, yeah, there you go, with mini cube image load. So we're gonna use this image pool policy if not present. But depending on your scenario, you may want to use also the always because maybe you want to pull the image from your private registry. Now, the schedule is at every second minute, so 0, 2, 4, and so on, 30 times per hour. And you can check your cron tab syntax on this website to make sure uh, it makes sense to you and is the thing you expect it to happen. A few details about this cron job kind. Uh, here you see a couple of lines that are very useful. So every time a schedule is triggered, the cron job kind creates a Kubernetes job that creates a Kubernetes pod. So jobs and pods stack up in your uh, Kubernetes cluster. And the way we are able to manage uh, this thing is via successful job history limit to two and failed jobs history limit to two. So we make sure uh, our cluster remains clean with these two details. One final thing about cron jobs in Kubernetes. Uh, now we're using batch v1 beta 1, but whenever we can start using batch v1, we can set a concurrency policy. Um, check the details on the official documentation but be, this detail basically means that let's say our uh, python script lasts long longer than two minutes so when the new schedule uh, trigger happens what are we gonna do do we want to allow for multiple python scripts to run at the same time or do we want to for example, kill all the old versions of the script. This is managed with this concurrency policy. So please check their documentation and see what fits your scenario. Okay, so I guess we're now ready to deploy our resources to the cluster. But first of all, let's have a quick view at the Lens IDE. So this is a very useful uh, graphical user interface to manage and monitor Kubernetes cluster. Here you see we are connected to our mini cube cluster, but you can see you can have different clusters here and you can connect to your AWS cluster or Azure or Google cluster on the in the cloud. We don't have anything uh, running in our cluster. We basically have our namespace that you've seen before but we don't have pods, we don't have cron jobs, we don't have jobs. But um, when we're going to deploy our resources, we're going to see that um, uh, there will be a new row here for a new cron job. And then when the schedule is triggered, because we are on the second minute, then we're going to see a job and pods. And because of the retention policy, we're only going to see two rows for pods here. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and deploy our application. So make cube deploy. And here we don't have uh, pods yet. So this is command that we define here it's not gonna it's not returning to any pod but um in a few moments we're gonna see that yeah there you go so this is our cron job that we defined and we already see that a pod is running and it's gonna be completed in a moment so sorry if i uh, Okay, 
so if I uh, one sec, yeah. if I click on the logs tab I'm able to see the logs for this part now uh, we're gonna see at most two rows here because the Kubernetes cron job is gonna clean all their jobs and all their pods uh, itself um, but please go ahead and check this IDE because it's very handy to manage any kind of resource that could run in your uh, Kubernetes cluster. Okay, now let's go back to our code. Now we can do more or less the same this way. So for example, if we invoke this now, we see that there's a pod here that is completed. And if we scroll down here, we can also check the logs for this pods with a command like this so make cube logs and here you see that the logs that we've seen in the uh, lens IDE and this is basically make file targets and some bash code nothing fancy basically the command is cube CDL, cube control logs job batch the name of the job and the namespace to filter from other jobs Okay, so we're seeing how to deploy this cron job to our Kubernetes cluster. Now let's say that uh, we want to delete resources, we want to make sure we're doing the right thing, so um, we can invoke uh, this to make sure we are targeting the right cluster and we can invoke this to double check the cron jobs that we're gonna delete so this is a cron job we created a few minutes ago so if we invoke this make file target we're going to delete our uh, cron job we define with this yaml file and then uh, we make sure that we delete pods if they're there uh, probably this is not going to be very useful because we set the retention policy and also Kubernetes itself is able to remove pods that belong to this cron job. But just in case, if there are any pods left there, we make sure we delete those pods with this command. So let's double check lens one last time. Here, um, we see we have parts, we have cron jobs, and then we're gonna delete everything. So make cube clean delete. So it's all gone. And now if we check the lens IDE uh, one more time, you see there are no cron jobs anymore. Okay, so that's it for today. Uh, please uh, do check the code on github feel free to play around with this stuff and happy kubernetes coding to everyone and i will catch you on the next one